Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ABA Definitions Made Easy. Today, our topic is generalization. Okay, let's start looking at some scenarios and let's see if the skills in each scenario are generalized or not. So, the first example Sam can use the toilet only when his mother is with him. Second example Layla has learned to count to 50 using blocks last year. This year, her math teacher is asking her to count to 50 using coins, but she does not seem to know how. Third example, Tom sits nicely and remains on task when Miss Rachel tutors him at home, but he does not do so at school. So, do you think that the skills are generalized in the previous examples? No, of course not. A person should be able to perform a skill under different conditions, with different people, in a different setting, and continue to exhibit that skill over time. It is meaningless to change a behavior unless the behavior is made to last. This is where generalization comes in handy. This is why we need generalization. The term generalization is used to describe the transfer of skills learned in training environment to the natural environment after training has ended. So let's try to generalize the skills we had in our previous example. Sam can use the toilet only when his mother is with him. Sam needs to generalize the behavior of using the toilet across different people. So he needs to use the toilet when his father is around, when his teacher is around, or even his nanny. He also, since he has learned to use the toilet at home, he needs to generalize the skills, this skill across different settings. So he needs to be able to use the toilet at a restaurant, at school, or at a relative's house. He also needs to maintain that skill over time. The second example, Layla has learned to count to 50 using blocks last year. This year, she is unable to count using coins. So, Layla needs to generalize the skill of counting to 50 across different stimuli. She also needs to generalize it across different uh, uh, people. So, she should not only be able to count it when her math teacher asks her to, she should also count when her mother asks her to, when her friends, etc. And she needs to do it across different settings. So she needs to use it um, or to be able to count at home, at the playground when she plays, or at the supermarket if she needs to count something. Again, her skill needs to be maintained over time. Third example, Tom sits nicely and remains on tasks when Miss Rachel tutors him at home, but he does not do so at school. So Tom needs to generalize the skill of sitting, of remaining on task at home, across different settings, and at school. He also needs to generalize it across different people. So he needs to remain on task with Miss Rachel and with Mr. Tom and with Miss Layla and with his mother, if, should her, if his mother is tutoring him. He also needs to maintain the skill over time. There are three forms of generalization, and this is where the fun really begins. Okay. So the first form is stimulus generalization. The second one is response generalization and maintenance. Stimulus generalization involves the occurrence of a behavior in response to another similar stimulus. This is a case of different stimuli that evoke the same response due to physical similarity or due to conceptual learning. Since definitions are never enough for me to understand a concept, I have learned a trick to understand what stimulus generalization is and to differentiate it from response generalization. So that little trick is to put multiple in front of the word. So now it reads multiple stimulus generalization, which translates to we have multiple stimuli and only one response. And here's the visual to accompany it. Now, let's look at an example to further understand that. Isabel calls her bearded father dad. 
she now also calls all men who have a beard dad. Different stimuli evoke the same response. Here, where is the response? The response is dad, only one response. And the multiple stimuli are all the men who have a beard. So we have one response, which is Isabel calling her father dad. And we have one stimuli, David Beckham with a beard, another stimuli, a picture of a bearded man, and a random picture of a man that she will also call dad because of the beard. So again, one response, which is dad saying dad, and multiple stimuli, which is which are all the men that she sees that have a beard. Okay, this is one example. Let's look at another example. A child has learned to tax a football ball. Now she names all around objects like balloon, egg, and apple ball. So how many responses do we have and how many stimulus, how many stimuli, I'm sorry. We have one response, which is saying ball, and multiple stimuli, which is the balloon, egg, and apple. Again, one response saying ball, and our multiple stimuli, balloon, apple, and egg. Now it's time for response generalization. Response generalization occurs when an organism emits a different response to a stimulus, which serves the same function as previously reinforced, reinforced responses. In other words, when a person displays a variation of the taught behavior in the presence of the original SD. Again, definitions, we need examples to understand that more. We're going to repeat the same trick we did earlier. So we're going to add that little multiple. Now it reads multiple response generalization, multiple responses and only one stimulus. And here's the visual or the chart. Always try to draw that chart when you have a word problem that you need to understand. It's really, really helpful. You have a dog called Buster. Sometimes you call him Buster, Boochie Booch and Boy. So again, we have one stimulus, which is Buster, the dog. Sometimes you call him Buster, Boochie Booch and Boy. Those are multiple responses. You have learned one response, which is Buster. And now you are having different variation of the same response towards the stimulus. So here's the cute little Buster, which is the stimulus. And sometimes I call him Bucci Booch, sometimes I call him Boy, and sometimes I call him Buster. Another example, your car is dirty. <clears throat> You have previously always cleaned it yourself. Now that you work full time, you either ask someone to wash it or drive it through a car wash. Your car is dirty, which is the stimulus. You have previously always cleaned it yourself, which is the response that you have learned. And now you have always you have different variations of that response that serve the same function, which is cleaning the car. Now here's the car, which is the stimulus. You can either wash it yourself, you can call someone to come and wash it, or you can drive through a car wash. Those are the multiple responses. We have also response maintenance. Response maintenance means that a student performs a response over time, even after systematic applied behavior procedures have been withdrawn. So that means that once you remove all teaching methods and prompts, the skill continues to occur. Again, as we said earlier, it is really important to maintain a skill. It is useless to learn a skill today just to forget it tomorrow. So you have to maintain it over time. Okie doke, it's quiz time. The quiz has five questions on response generalization and stimulus generalization. I will read the questions for, uh, with you. What I'm asking you to do is to pause the video after reading the question and give yourself time to actually work through it. You try to use the trick that we have learned together. Use the chart uh, before answering the question or before looking at the answer. So the first question. Amanda has just finished high school. This is her first year in college. With so many classes and new teachers, 
she always seems to forget her psychology teacher's name. So she sometimes calls him Sir, Mr, or Professor. This is an example of stimulus generalization or response generalization. And the answer is response generalization. We have only one stimulus, which is the psychology teacher, and different responses, sir, mister, and professor. I hope you got that one right. Next question. Tom has been swimming since he was six years old, and he has been coached in the front crawl in his private pool. At swim practice, without coaching, he quickly masters breast, butterfly, and backstroke. After swim practice, he just loves to lie on his inflatable mat. His ability to move between different strokes is an example of stimulus generalization or response generalization. And the answer is response generalization. We have only one stimulus, which is the pool, and different responses. So he can swim, he has learned to swim um, the front crawl, and his variation, the response to backstroke and butterfly stroke, and lying on the inflatable mat. Next question. My friend loves to eat pasta, so I take her to a new Italian restaurant that offers an all-you-can-eat buffet. While we were there, we ate different types of pastas, pizzas, and their delicious desserts. This is an example of stimulus generalization, response generalization, and the answer is stimulus generalization. We have only one response, which is eating, and we have different stimuli. We have the delicious pasta, pizza, and their dessert. Question four. Talia's grandmother lives alone in the city. Whenever Talia goes to visit, she always knocked on the front door. Now that her grandmother is hard of hearing, she also rings the bell and calls her grandmother to make sure she comes to the door to open it. Is that an example of stimulus generalization or response generalization? The answer is response generalization. There's only one stimulus, which is the door, opening the door, and many responses knocking on the door, ringing the bell, or talking on the phone. Her previous method was knocking on the door, and now she has learned different, she has generalized the skill in order to open the door, which is the stimuli. Next question. Jack has a severe, severe allergic reaction to bee stings. Last time he got stung by a bee, he was rushed to the hospital and had to stay overnight. Now, every time Jack sees the flying insects, he starts to scream. Is that an example of stimulus generalization or response generalization? And the answer is stimulus generalization. We have only one response here, which is Jack screaming every time he sees different stimuli that are the flying insects. So different type of flying insects are the different stimuli. Okay, that was the last question. I hope you understood everything. If you still have questions, please write them in the comments. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Bye.